Hey everybody, how's it going? So tonight we're going to do uh, another, like a quick tip tonight on Orca, uh, Orca Slicer. Uh, so certainly been playing with this a little bit more. Um, there's some, some nice little uh, features that I wanted to talk about and show you all. Just in case you're also taking a look at this, if you haven't already watched the previous video where we talk about how to like download it and install it, um, it's fine. You can watch this one first and then just go back and watch that one. I'll, um, I'll put it at the end in like the little corner over here or over here. I don't know, but I'll put it. Uh, so it's fine. You can watch this one first, then go back and then do me a favor. If you like the content, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and drop a comment, uh, you know, really helps the YouTube algorithm, uh, to know that people are, uh, watching this stuff. So anyway, uh, Orca, here we go. So a couple things I wanted to talk about. One of them is I've been really trying to to tune um, the Z seam a little bit, and it does have some cool little tools and how it how it does like Z seam uh, modifications. So in this particular instance, <clears throat> the the couple things we're going to work on are um, adding some primitives. So um, like if you're used to Idea Maker or one of the, the the slicers, you can add primitives and you can do tests around them. So if you right click anywhere and say add primitive, I'm going to go ahead and just add a cylinder. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add one more cylinder back here. So right clicking, adding cylinder again. So now you've got a couple out here on the bed. Um, down here on your quality tab um, and where we have the seam portion, of course, you have a couple of stock selections here, nearest align back random. And if we do align back and we slice the plate here, it's going to slice them both. And you can see that the, that it is aligned down the back, which is where, where you wanted it to, which is great. Now, um, if you do have some, some wackadoodle parts or something where you need to be a bit more specific about the placement of it, you know, so like an idea maker, you can sort of specify um, somewhere on the, the bed coordinates, a approximate location to, to where to put the seam. And, and like it does its best to do it. This one, you can be actually a bit more precise. So if we go back over here to out of the preview and back over to prepare, um, you have this, this cool feature. So you select this first shape here and you can pick this seam painting tool. So hit seam paint, come over here and it's already defaulted with a brush shape and a brush size and all that good stuff. And you can simply just draw how you want your seam. So whether you want a straight line, you want something weird. If you're gonna, if you have a, a square or rectangular shape, you want to make sure it's on a one portions of it on a corner or another corner or tuck, you know, whatever. Uh, you have some op options there. So once you've painted that on, you can hit slice plate, and there you go. There's your Z seam. Now you can see in the back, right? This particular one is still taking on our back seam position that we highlighted here. But if you want to go ahead and uh, do a seam position on this one as well. Just click it, paint the seam, and now we can do something more like that. Now it's probably not going to be great, but we'll slice it. So again, it's going to try and do its best to 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 put the excuse me put the seam how you painted it. And obviously, I drew something a little bit wacky, so you can see it's doing its best. So that's kind of nice. You have a bit more finer control over how you want to place your seam. Now, as far as quality of the scene goes, this is where this position over here is where you can really um, dial some things in. So this scene gap, um, and it is basically the scene gap, um, if you want to liken it to something like coasting, right? So basically, if you have a coasting setting of, let's say, a quarter of a millimeter or half a millimeter, whatever it is, where basically right, the nozzle stops extruding, you know, whatever you specify, quarter of a millimeter before it reaches the seam, right? And just lets it sort of coast and ooze out a little bit of material. And that's supposed to help reduce the, uh, the appearance of the seam. So the more you play with this seam gap, um, the better your seam will get. And you just kind of need to play with it for your printer. So the default is you can do it in a percentage or you can do it as an expression in, in uh, millimeters or you know, inches if, if that's what you're working on. So if I, like in my case, I'm working on a 0.6 nozzle, the percentage is expressed as a, as a percentage of the diameter of the nozzle. So 10% of a 0.6 nozzle is 0.06, blah, blah, blah. So it's a pretty tiny gap. Um, and I think the default when you first start is like a 15% gap. So um, it's, it's kind of nice. You can really tweak and tune and play with this a little bit. I think I went as high as a 50% um, gap here. And once you slice the plate, it does a nice job of visually representing how that seam's going to look. So now instead of it being white, you can sort of see that there's a, um, you know, a, a visible gap here. And I can, I can tell you from some test prints, you know, um, so it's got a coast, essentially, you know, 0.3 millimeters in this case. 
of material. So point three is about where I had my my um, my coasting settings around in IdeaMic. I think 0.25 millimeters or something like that. So it's getting close. So you can really sort of tweak and tune and mess with it. And if you don't want to mess with it from a percentage uh, perspective, again, you can just say, uh, no, I want it to be 0.25 millimeters. Uh, and then you re-slice the plate. And well, there you go. I don't know why it's doing that, but that's kind of cute. Um, but anyway, that's how you play with your seam gap. Um, uh, it's probably doing that because I don't, it's not a straight line up and down, right? I've done some sort of Zorro shape across here. So the, that's the one quick tip. The other one, um, that we will also talk about is that you can play with, um, different, um, processes if you have more than one part on your build plate. So you can see here under the process up here, you have a global option or an objects option. So if I've got this object checked and I click on objects, and you can see here it's highlighted. Then down here, you can now play around with settings for that object that you have highlighted. So in this case, if you wanna throw multiple objects on your plate, and you want to do different tests on how to tune your Z seam. So if you wanted to put like, you know, on the four corners, uh, then absolutely you can do that. Then you can basically say, well, I want this one at, you know, 50%. And then I want this one. You can see it still says a quarter minute. I want this one at, I don't know, let's just call it 75%. Okay. And so if we slice the plate, then you can see this one's got, you know, that that gap, this one hopefully is going to show a bit wider of a gap. Um, and so there you go. So you have some flexibility there to tweak and tune parts or the settings for the parts that are in the build plate um, all in the same, uh, all the same job file that you load up to your printer. So there's a couple of cool ones for you if you're still playing around. Um, I'll go into probably in the next couple of days a few others like adding modifiers. So if you right click anywhere on a highlighted part, you have the option to add some modifiers. Um, so again, right, that's adding a part and we're gonna modify a portion of the print settings based on the modifier shape. And again, we'll get into that uh, in the next one. Um, but there's some, so, some other cool features going on here. So I kind of like it. Um, and uh, there you go, like a nice little quick and dirty one. So again, if you haven't watched the first video about how to install and all that good stuff, I'll link it down here. And don't forget to like and subscribe. See y'all, thanks a lot.